welcome to the all-wheel drive Lexus ES 350. They brought it back with a new body style since 2019, and I think before then it was a, it was the ES 330 if I'm not mistaken. But they have changed the body style, added a few good luxury features to it even more. Yes, it's Lexus, but it wasn't the quite hype of a Lexus that I'm used to. At least the ES model wasn't. And this one by far has really changed the game. But let's see if it's really up to the price tag that it's at for this edition. All right, so Lexus redesigned this ES sedan, like I said, in 2019, giving it a more aggressive looking design that uses brand new signature spindle grille, which again, I told you all, I really like on my Lexus RC. Not too much of a fan on the other ones, but this one doesn't look too bad, but they did put that spindle grille on here. They added the Android auto smartphone connectivity, which is great in all the cars as well. Um, now this is the third generation model like I said they had the ES back back in the day down to a 250 then they had the 300 they had the 330 and now the ES 250 all-wheel drive but this is the third edition this is the ES 350 all-wheel drive um, now what I can say is the ES retains its same dimensions and basic style so you know it, it looks good now they they did up this package with an F Sport model this package right here is not necessarily F Sport but they do have an F Sport model they have this black line special edition F Sport with some great interiors now I will tell it that like the, the interior quality of this car looks really good and the color schemes that they use looks even better so you know I personally not a fan of the ES1 but I can see how there are plenty of folks who do like it now $40,000 for this ES model base is okay um, but they do have the the sport F edition and then the ultimate luxury edition that can go anywhere between 45,000 and 49,000 now I will say there are other vehicles out there in this price range that really really stand out more than the ES um, and I'll just be I'll be honest I brought it home and my wife was like oh that looks like the car across the street and that car across the street was a Toyota Camry so um, is it worth spending 49000 to say that you have a Toyota Camry it's up to you it just it just depends on that note um, I've given this thing a good dr drive here and there and I've, I've tested around some things and it holds its value but it doesn't drive like I would expect a Lexus to drive um, all the bells and whistles about the Lexus and the new things that they have uh, that they redesigned this thing with looks really good it kind of reminds me of my vehicle um, uh, there are certain things that stand out in front of you they're right in your hand they're right in the cockpit area for you to just adjust and change um, but there are a few things inside the interior that I don't like as well um, you can change it to your eco, normal, and F-Sport drive mode um, with the flick of a wrist. Now that's something I don't like. Uh, I'll speak about it a little bit more as we get into the interior, but it's, it's, a, it's a great luxury sedan uh, for those that are looking for their point A to point B uh, vehicle. Will you get all excited sitting in it? No, but it does have a comfortable feel once you get inside. One thing I have become a fan of are these Lexus wheels. I don't care what car you get. I really like Lexus and their rim choice. Like they look really good and they stand out on a lot of vehicles. Um, I think for for the value of these wheels, like it's awesome. So the wheels are it. And then I also Love their lights. Good tell. Welcome inside the Lexus ES three fifty. 
Uh, what can I say about the 350 here? Well, what I can say first is that uh, we had back in 2008, 2009, we had the ES 330. Uh, for all those that know the ES line, they went from the ES 300 to the uh, ES 330, and now they're at the ES 350. Um, it feels like an ES. Um, the ES is the luxury sedan model um, of Lexus. It's one of them, I should say. Uh, and it's a full body cabin. Um, what I can say about this Lexus E350, at least this year, um, it feels quite comfortable inside the cabin. Now, my RC is a little bit cozier just because it is uh, a coupe. Um, and the way it's built, it doesn't feel compact. It just feels cozy is the word that I would call it. Um, but this right here feels like you're more open, spacious, which it is four door, um, luxury feel. Um, Everything about it uh, is different than the performance package that I have with my Lexus, whereas this is more catered with the softer colors, um, less of the whole wood grain, but more of a texture package feel to it. The seats still kind of feel the same. Um, that <clears throat> is not gonna, not gonna be an issue, but it holds up very well. Honestly, I like the interior, except for this bar right up front. This bar right up front that allows you to change from eco to sports to normal mode, it's a little eyesore. Even when I'm driving, I just can't seem to like not look at it. And, and then the fact that I have to come up here to change it to eco or normal or sport, um, or for that matter, turn off your turn off your all-wheel drive capabilities here um, it has a sports package to it uh, but I will tell you I would not be thinking about getting on a track I would not be thinking about spending my time uh, going back and forth with people on the street at any manner at all in this this is pure I'm coasting day-to-day -day Lexus luxury um, yeah I think for anyone who, who is looking for a Lexus package, this is a good package. Is it great for the price? No. And I'm not saying that because I wasn't a big fan of the 330. I'm saying that because I'm not a big fan of the ES line. Um, as far as why drive is concerned, uh, yes, it has a sports mode, but it does not pack that punch as it would with some of the higher, more higher performance models. Um, it, it can get up. It can definitely move. It can get up and do its thing, but it, it, it does not have that punch. Like when I hit it in the RC, um, you feel it. You feel the drop back. You feel the, the butt of the car drop down, uh, but you don't quite get that in this. Um, as you get up past four and 5,000 RPMs, it does pull once you get there um, and you can kind of hear it in the car. But to me, it still takes you a little bit more of a longer time to get there. Uh, the car is quite heavy uh, for that matter, but all in all, um, if you're into uh, the more modern based luxury vehicle for Lexus, I guess you wouldn't go wrong with it. I don't know if I would get a brand new one right off the gate. I would look for like the 2019 or 2020 models because <clears throat> there was nothing wrong with those. Nothing wrong at all. Um, so, you know, to, to put a higher price tag on this individual one, I don't, I don't see where it's warranted. Maybe it is. Um, the cabin is quiet. I'll give it that. The cabin is real quiet. Um, and yeah, that's it. I mean, it doesn't make me feel special or anything. I just know, uh, by sitting here without the little Lexus symbol in front of you, um, that is, is good, it's golden, you know, you feel like you're in a Lexus. Um, but that's about it, you know. Performance wise, it's not it for me. Now, what I will tell you um, about this interior is I do like the fact that 
your seats have all the same and, and maybe that was just maybe it's in my car as well I, I, now that i'm thinking about it um but all of the features within the lumbar support that this chair has is it's top notch um i haven't said anything else that has given me the type of lumbar support and back and height that i would what i would need or request i should say in a vehicle and this one definitely does it so anyway that is the interior of the ES350. That's the Lexus ES350. Not much I can say about it. It's a comfortable car. But it's definitely got to be your choice. Thank y'all for tuning in for another Planes, Trains, and Automobile. Catch y'all on the next one.